Today on No Corkage we answer the question, what is wine? Hey everyone, and welcome to No Corkage the modern guide to wine appreciation. Today, we're gonna answer the most basic question, what is wine? Well, this may seem trivial to some, but actually, it's really important to know what makes this lovely drink what it is. So let's dive into it. Wine, at its most basic level, is juice that's gone through the fermentation process. It's most commonly made from grapes, although it can be made from almost any fruit and even some vegetables. Now, it's most commonly found in white, red, or rosé styles, though other colors do exist. So let's take a closer look at the star of the show, the grapes. And for that, we're gonna have to take a quick field trip. So this is a vineyard, specifically the Faith, Hope, and Charity Vineyard in Terrebonne, Oregon. Now, a vineyard is where wine is born. Wine, as we know, comes from grapes, and grapes are grown on vines. That's what a vineyard is. Now, there's a lot of variables that can affect the flavor of a wine that start right here in the vineyard. It can be anything from the type of soil that the grapes are grown in, to the shape of the slope, to the amount of wind or sun or exposure to the elements that the grapes get. These can all affect the grapes once they're turned into wine in the bottle. So let's take a closer look at these grapes and see how they're grown. So this is a grape cluster. Wine grapes are grown in bunches like these, and the shape of that bunch can actually be kind of determined by the species of grape that's being grown. Now, there's actually a number of wine species out there, and those are known as varietals. This is the name that you're actually more familiar with when you hear things like Merlot, Cabernet. That is the species of grape, or its varietal. Now, a vineyard can actually have several varietals growing at once. You can see here that these grapes are green right now because they're not ripe yet, but as they ripen, they're going to darken and get some color, and that's where the kind of red color in wine comes from. Now, grapes are grown on vines, and we can see the vine back here. Wine grape vines are incredibly tenacious and very robust. In fact, in places like California and France and Italy and kind of the old wine producing worlds, you'll find vines that are easily over 100 years old and they impart really interesting flavors of their own to the grapes. So let's head back home and talk a little bit more about what wine grapes are. A wine grape is different than the grapes that you would eat at home in a couple of key ways. First off, they're smaller than table grapes and they're always gonna have seeds unlike some varieties of table grape. And finally, they tend to be sweeter and this last point is really what makes them perfect for making wine. You see, the main component that wine is known for is alcohol. So let's do some science. Alcohol is formed in the wine by the process of fermentation. Natural or added yeasts feed off of the sugar in the grape juice. As they break down, this sugar produces two main byproducts, CO2 and alcohol. Now this is what separates wine from grape juice. Now, as I said before, there are a ton of variables that can affect the taste of a wine, and we're gonna go over some of them right now. First off, wine is always categorized by the date that the grapes were harvested. This is known as its vintage. Sometimes wine can be made with grapes from a variety of harvest years, and these are known as non-vintage wines. The vintage is a great tool for wine drinkers to make deductive guesses at the characteristics of the wine. Another variable is the varietal. And now, as we've said earlier, that's the type of grape used to make the wine. As we explore more of these, you'll gain a better understanding of their characteristics. But for now, just know that wines are categorized as either single varietal, which is made from one type of grape, or a blend, which is made from multiple types of grape. However, it's not always that simple. You see, in France, they categorize wine by the region in which it was made, and they have very strict guidelines as to what varietals are used in those wines. We'll explore those regions in depth later. Finally, let's talk about why wine education is even a thing. Wine is incredibly complex, and as we've seen, there's so many variables that make up the flavor profile of a wine. Because of this, there's a lot of knowledge to learn. And it's important to have that knowledge because wine is more than a drink. It's an experience. It's complex, it's romantic, it's elegant, and it's subtle. And most of all, it's never the same from bottle to bottle. Having a wine education in any form allows you to experience more from your wine. It's that simple. It allows you to master the wonderful art of food and wine pairing. But because of all this complexity, it can seem really overwhelming or daunting to try and create that education. But don't stress about it. Wine drinking will always be what you make it. As long as you're enjoying yourself, you're doing it right. It's that simple. 
Think about the education side as a way to enhance the experience, to take it to that next level. It's simply a tool. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please leave it a like. We'll be diving into the basics of wine appreciation next, so subscribe to stay up to date on that. Until then, take care and enjoy the wine.